Hey, what's up everybody? It's been a minute since I've broken down uh, one of my epic orchestral hip hop sports cues. So I figured I would break down another one of the ones that I wrote for CBS Sports. Um, so this is called Down for the Team. You know how we do, we'll take a listen to it and then we'll talk about it on the flip. So this cue, um, it's a little different than the other cue um, that I broke down for you guys. Actually, the first um, sports cue uh, that I broke down for you guys in that I'm not using a lot of tracks um, in this particular cue. Um, so as you see here, I mean, I have, uh, you know, horn ensemble, I'm using Mastello Brass, a Brahm. Uh, some trumpets, I mean, that is it for my brass. Um, real scaled down drums, but you see, I mean, they still sound fat and we'll, we'll kind of get through them. Uh, but, you know, some piati just for my, you know, cymbal, who's a timpani, uh, some tubular bells, and then just a, um, you know, a kit built off of uh, some one shots and some loops. Um, that's it. And then, of course, you know, some risers, um, you know, whatever, the impact stuff. Uh, real, just a little bit of color stuff uh, with some sims, so a low guitar uh, for some support with my, you know, low brass and a high guitar for some support with the horns. Um, a bass, you know, 808 bass. Um, that's carrying all the bottom and some strings. I mean, and that's it. So, um, you know, you can write an epic cue without having like, you know, a ton of sounds as well. Um, and it, like, you know, it depends on the cue. First cue that I broke down for you guys, I mean, my drum, you know, I, I used a lot of stuff on my drums, but I think we're still able to capture that same, you know, vibe, that same epic vibe. Uh, so I wanted to kind of show you the difference, how you could have a scaled down um, approach, but still, you know, build a, a pretty epic track. So this particular cue, um, first of all, it's in F sharp minor, um, and it's at 88 BPM, so 88 beats per minute um, on this one. And it all really started, y'all, with um, the bass groove. Um, it's kind of where, um, I, I guess I got the inspiration 
uh, for the queue. So um, I, I guess so the, to really hear it, it's just. Q is actually three chords, F sharp minor, D major seven, C sharp major, pretty much the whole Q. So it's just about, you know, layering and, you know, you know, your melody and all that kind of stuff. So, um, as I said, so in terms of the bass, man, so the bottom is being carried. Um, this 808 bass that I'm using is actually a Sublab uh, XL, and I, I'm using a patch um, that's called Drilly. And again, this is the only thing um, carrying the bottom end for me. And um, I'll show you guys something else. So just in terms of how I have it uh, set, as you see, you know, nothing much but just um, some EQ on it, man. I got a high pass. I typically high pass my, my bass, you know, my 808 stuff like that at around 40 hertz. Uh, so this is at 37.3. So again, it's around 40 hertz, but it's the only thing at all in that 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 range. There's nothing else within that 40 um, hertz range. Really, from 60 hertz down, there's nothing else because um, the next thing that I have is I have my um, kick, but I have my kick high passed at around 60. Um, and sometimes I high pass my key even as high as 80 hertz and I don't have anything else really going on there. So, um, just play that for you. Um, uh, it's... You know, just real simple and, and I don't recall a lot, um, in terms of what I did. As you can see, I mean, we got the output pulled back about 5 dB. Um, cause it, it hits pretty hard and I think I might've done something, um, you know, with, with the low pass on this within the patch. Um, but I don't think I did too much to it. And, and that, that's pretty much, that's the bottom beat. And then all I do is I add in monster low brass and a brom to help support that. Just one of the tonics. I mean, that's it. Now, one thing, um, this particular brown, and let me get this uh, bass out. So, um, muscle brass, just so you can hear what they sound like. So just have those in octaves. And then I have a real gritty um, kind of sounding brahm along with that. So here how gritty that is. It's real gritty, real nasty, you know, um, kind of sounding. Um, <clears throat> and it's just a one shot um, that I have and, um, you know, in there, but you know, that that's pretty much it. Uh, in terms of my low end and then what I do is on the second pass of those uh, Let's bring those two back when I get around to the, the second pass of those Just to continue to build and build my layers and continue to create in interest I bring in a low guitar um, to support them And that's it. Um, and then what I do on my uh, guitar is, of course, and I think I probably showed this um, to you before, but I love the um, the CLA guitars. Um, just really, really great. I, you know, I reamplify. Of course, it's on heavy, uh, and this one, and then you can just kind of see <clears throat> my settings here. Um, and if I just play the guitar for you. By itself, uh, 
So that, um, you know, as compared to uh, having it, um, say if we don't have it amp reamplified, so you get a difference there. And then of course it's reamplified. So it just gives it, um, you know, that nice uh, grit that really helps the guitar cut through. Um, so yeah, I mean, for the bottom end, that's it, you know, for the track. And then the next thing that I did is I just built um, my drum groove. Um, and so if I play um, just the, you know, the kick, you know, the, the snare, the clap, and the hats with a loop. So th this is the basic groove. But y'all hear how that smacks? I mean, that, that drum groove, like, you know, it just really smacks, but it's not a whole bunch um, to it, right? So uh, my kick uh, is just a kick one shot, but what I do is, um, so, you know, real, real light um, reverb on it, just so it's just not totally, totally dry. I mean, you can barely hear it. Um, Oops, I got, I got my wrong thing open. I'm opening up my hats. Let's open up the kick here. Um, all right, so there we go. So again, even less, you know, reverb on it. You know, just a little bit of reverb so everything glues together. Um, and as I told you guys, you see I have it high past at 60. But what I do to really um, help this kick cut is this CLA-2A is amazing. <laughs> this compressor is amazing. So um, I'll play, so here's the kick, right? Hear that? And as you see, we're not hardly getting any gain reduction um, on the kick, but it's just, now listen to that. All right, now I'm gonna bypass it. You hear the difference? So you, you see what it's hitting at, right? So then when we do this, it's giving us about, you know, four more dB of just presence. And then the color of this compressor, this compressor just has a great color uh, to it as well. So, but again, as you see, I'm just using the start me up, you know, pretty much. And I, I think I dialed this back because I think it's naturally set at 40. So I dialed the reduction back just a tad and, you know, then the game, we just left at 40. So I just like this for the color more so than how it really helps um, the kick punch through. So, um, <clears throat> and then with my snare, you'll see, um, and that's just an 808 snare, you know, nothing, just a little reverb and some high pass, high pass around, you know, 180. And that's it. Now my claps though, I do the same in terms of adding a little more dynamic presence for them. Of course, a little more reverb on the clap because you kind of want them to, you know, be a little more transient and you want to feel that. Um, but outside of that, so I have them high passes around 200, but I'm also using the um, CLA-2A on these, but I'm getting about 3 dB gain reduction on my claps because I really want them to pop through. And as you see um, here, you see my reduction now is up almost at 48, um, where I had it down at about 38 on my kick, but the kick is so present, you know. Um, so here, if we uh, do our claps, so you see that, what we're getting, you get about 3 dB gain reduction. I mean, but listen to that presence as compared to, so hit a difference. Yeah, so CLA-2A, man, it, it's just a great, great compressor um, for, like, drums and stuff. I love using it uh, on my drums. Then I have, I just have a loop, and you're going to be like, huh? But, like, check the loop. 
So that just kind of helps, you know, kind of groove everything to put that clap in there. But the thing that I want you to notice um, about the loop, and I think that's very important, is where I have it high pass. So I've got it high pass at about um, you know 134, right? But I'm gonna show you like what this sounds like if I don't have this um, high pass. So um, right, but listen to it if it's not high pass. So basically what we're doing is we're getting all that bottom out. See all that bottom in there? We want that out. So we want to take that bottom in out so it's not competing with our kick drum and certainly not competing with our 808. We don't need it. We got our kick in there for the bottom and the glue, but this is just to give us you know, some movement and some rhythm. So that's really the reason that I'm using a loop. It's just to give me some, some movement and some rhythm. So we get that bottom in out there, keep our bottom in uh, cleaned up, you know, um, so we can really identify everything else that's happening. And then I just have uh, some trap hats um, that, that's going on. So. And what I did, if you, you see how they're broken up separately like that, this part of the loop actually happened earlier in the loop. And I didn't like where it was happening. So what I did is I just created that part just to put it on the end of the loop because it feels like what would happen going into um, a new section as opposed to like in the middle of the section. So um, outside of that, you know, a cymbal crash, some timpani, and, you know, the tubes hitting on that F sharp on the top of the beat. So if we play all of our drums, and I tell y'all, the tubular bells, they work for epic orchestral hip hop. You don't need them a lot. You know, you, can't, you don't want to overdo it, but man, hitting those things, you know, right on the one. A little riser effect. And then the timpani just helps give us a little more power and nastiness kind of, you know, going into our sections. So that's it for our drums. I mean, pretty much it. Nothing else really happening. And as you see, man, we're using, you know, the trap. That's one, two, three, four, five you know, six, seven, eight things in our drums and then some risers and, and they sound um, pretty epic, right? So then, um, you know, outside of that, um, you know, the next thing that we do have, we and I talked about it, we have our simps and we're using some simps just for some color. So we got this one um, Palion um, that's doing this little... Just a little color. So it's called hot seat. So we got that for color, right? And um, again, not too much happening. Just a um, you know a little high pass on it. Um, and nothing else. All the, the uh, delay and stuff that you hear is built into the patch. And then I have this one shot, um, and you really don't even notice it. Um, but if you really listen out, you can hear it. But it's just a real simple F sharp minor chord with, um, I got a, a decapitator on it, I believe, and I think a, maybe a stereo. Yeah, stereo delay. So um, with a good bit of reverb uh, on it as well. And it's just something really more so for effect. So I've got, like I said, I got the decapitator on it. So you hear how it's kind of, just kind of mangling it a little bit. And then you hear the stereo delay, you hear it move 
um, you hear it move in the stereo field and with that nice um, reverb on it. And it's just, just something to give us some additional color, nothing more, nothing less, <laughs> and nothing super deep, right? And then um, I think I showed you the low guitar already. Um, and then I have a high guitar here. And all this high guitar does is... Um, right and all it's doing is supporting a horn line so just adds a little something else on that top line and helps this uh horn line kind of really cut through of course the horn just a horn ensemble patch, center brass, horn ensemble, um, you know, not doing anything with the mic positioning, it's just using the full mix there. Um, and, and that's it. So now um, we get down to um, <clears throat> our, as we call it, our motor, you know, and disregarded as our melody. And our melody is actually um, <clears throat> shared between our strings and our brass. And the interesting thing about these cues is when I sent it to my publisher, they really dug it. But one of the things that they suggested which was really, really cool. was like, yo, that, that melodic thing that you got going on with the strings is really cool. What if you added some horns to it? I was like, okay, cool. Let's try it and see. And I got to tell you, adding the horns to it, like, really, really made it pop. So, you know, sometimes, like, you could do something, but you get inspiration or, or suggestions from other people that could really even help elevate your cue uh, that much more. So, you know, always be open to, I think, sharing and hearing other ideas about, you know, other things that you can do, um, you know, in your music. And I am... Like I'm, I'm part of a composer community called like 52 Qs, and we do a lot of that. We do a lot of bouncing stuff off of each other. You know, we'll listen to each other's cues. Um, it's like, yo, man, will you try this or maybe try that or whatever. So that's always good to do. Um, and I know our music, that's our babies, but you have to get to a point wherein um, you can let that baby go, <laughs> you know, and be able to take some constructive criticism. All it's going to do is help you grow and get better. I promise you. So, um, yeah, great, just a great, great suggestion. So shout out, um, you know, to, to my boy, Dave Croft for, uh, the suggestion, uh, for getting those horns, um, added to the queue. So, um, here we have, um, the string line. So the string motif, pretty simple, but this is the melodic content of the cue. This is kind of what's driving the cue. It. It's, it's real different. I, I kind of like it because it's, you know, it's, it's kind of different. Um, and again, you know, so, you know, you guys know that I use my Epic um, strings. Um, you know, I like that particular <clears throat> patch to help me kind of with breaking out my strings. It's just a short string ostinato from Spitfire um, Originals, Epic Strings. Just is a cool library, y'all. So I like using that a lot. And then I'm just using um, my, my cinematic studio strings. Um, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, I want to open that up. So cinematic studio strings, um, Staccatissimo uh, on violin one, violin two, and viola. Um, I don't even think I'm using celli. Oh, yeah, and I'm using Chelly as well, but Staccatissimo on all those. So, um, in terms of how this broken up, because you hear some harmony, you know, I like to, and this is just me, you can get you a 
group patch for your strings, get you a dope string line, you know, and, and be fine. I like harmonizing my strings. It's something that I like to do uh, personally. So typically I, I find a little more it, it a little more interesting doing it that way. So I just happen to harmonize the strings. So um, the, I guess the top line is Right, and then when we come in on the second half of it, it's pretty much the same thing, and the violin ones go up an octave. Right, so our violin twos are playing what? So same thing, they're, they're playing the same as the epic strings, so they're basically down an octave from our violin ones, right? So our violas, Obviously, they're harmonizing, and then our cellos. Down another octave. So that's it. So. That's it. So all so you think about it in this particular aspect, the violas are the part of the string section that's providing the harmony. Everybody else is just playing in octaves, but it adds um, some interest. So that that's our melody. And then what we do is in the second half of our melody, we build um, by adding in um, our brass. And this is a, a library that I've recently started using. I've had it forever and just never used this patch, but it is such a great patch. So, um, you know, if you have the, uh, I always forget what the name of the library is, but you know, it has the Hollywood uh, strings and all that. I, I just can't call it right now, but. So this is Hollywood Pop Brass. Dope, dope sounding brass section. Yeah, East West. So yeah, if you have East West Composer Cloud or something like that, or I happen, happen to own it, Hollywood Pop Brass is awesome. Thing I like about this is, um, again, it, it has more of a pop sound. It doesn't have that big, you know, orchestral sound. I mean, definitely me using, you know, my, my center brass, you know, trumpets or my BBC orchestral trumpets are not going to work in this particular regard you want something tighter cleaner um so hollywood pop brass um just really really works and basically what i did um is i have so i have a staccato right um and that's a high high brass staccato but then i mir i marry them with a high brass marcato just to give it a little more definition. Right? And then I add them, I blend them with the low brass. And of course the marcato. And then when we add all those together, um, we get that, this, right? And then if we add those with our strings, we get, you hear how big that sounds? I mean, it, it sounds, you know, epic you know, all by itself, but again, guys, some trumpets and a string section, that's it. So it, it's just really about how you combine um, your stuff to try to, um, you know, create that sound. 
Um, and then outside of that, I do, so my horns, um, in terms of structuring things, my horns are just that kind of, I always love using horns for my counter melody, just to create some sense of counter melody, a little more interest, um, you know, whatever. You don't necessarily, you know, have to do it, but it's just something I like to do. So if you hear us going from the theme when the horns come in, getting into the breakdown, you'll hear how that counter melody works. from there right so if we kind of talk let's talk structure or building the cue a little bit so one thing you want to do you want to come out the gate swinging right this is sports um we're not building up to something we want to come out the gate swinging so we come out the, the gate swinging right uh i'm just going to pay just just a, a tad bit of it Right? But not full throttle, but enough where there's energy. Um, we still got energy. We're introducing something here and you still, you hear the melody in there too. So it's not like I'm just starting with like a breakdown. My melody is in there, but I want to give myself just another layer to go um, when I get to my next section. So you see now when I get to my next section, now I got my trumpets in and my high strings. Counter. So you see, we build. Even though we started with energy, boom, there's another layer of energy, but it's not crazy because that's the thing about sports. They don't want something that goes from like super low. They don't want this type of dynamic range. They really want it more so here because typically this is like for graphics or something like that. So they're going to be talking like with the music under it. So they can't have the music going crazy, you know, uh, dynamically doing a whole bunch of different stuff. They need it kind of steady, but they still need energy. So that's why you'll notice like even now when we get to the breakdown coming out of that section, right? we still got energy. It's not breaking down too much. You see, I didn't take like my claps out and take my groove out and all that. We still want to keep some energy in it. And then when it builds, it's, we just don't want it to build too much, but we want to feel that the cue is developing. So it's, it's, it builds a little more. And if you guys notice, so then we did our first harmonic change. Nothing super deep, um, but just to keep it interesting, because, uh, yeah, I mean, we're going F sharp minor, D major 7, C sharp, right? So to keep it interesting, guess what? Let's go to a B minor chord instead of the, the D major 7 chord. Just oh, oh, a little harmonic uh, difference there, something a little different. Um, and then something that I did as well. I, you see, I introduced some long trumpets for the first time just against that um, B flat minor. Just a little ba-da, ba-da. Nothing real deep, but just something to keep interest, but nothing that's like overly distracting either. So, so it's all these things that you have to bear in mind when you're building. So let's just play that section again and listen to what the, the trumpets do when we get to that B minor chord. How the 
timpani is just adding more. Ba -ba -boom. You don't hear the timpani a lot. I mean, if you look, my timpani pretty much are kind of doing, you know, the same thing. They're setting up the tops, you know, of phrases pretty much. Um, and you see here, now I have it in the middle of the phrase because I, I just want to add a little more, you know, something to the cue, end of the phrase, but boom, I'm put, popping them in the middle of the phrase there. But not a whole bunch. Tiffany aren't doing a whole bunch, but when they come in, they add that additional um, energy um, that you need. And then the only other thing is I have some Piatti uh, happening. As you see, I'm using... Um, so if we take this section here, I'm using three different symbols just to kind of give you your ear uh, something different. So we use the BBC um, Piatti, we use the Cinnaper uh, Piatti, which is more of orchestral, you know, crash symbols, right? And then we have a symbol uh, one shot as well. So if we just kind of play the different symbols, that, so you got that sound. I know it's gonna be boring just listening to some symbols, but it matters. So then you got that high symbol, it pulls your ear somewhere else. And then you have a different crash, so it doesn't sound like it's just like the same, you know, hit just over and over again, sounding exactly the same. And I know they have round robins and things of that nature that helps, you know, with the repetitive, um, you know, hitting of the samples, but what I like to do is just have a little different, if you have them, but you can certainly find one shots that have, you know, different symbols or whatever. So what I do is typically I'll combine, I do like the bigness of the Piatti, but I like the coolness of, of some of those, grabbing some of those one shots as well. Um, so, you know, just a, a little suggestion, um, just to, you know, not make your, your cue, um, you know, sound so sterile um, or whatever. So, and then the other thing is, you know, you always want to have a good button um, on your cue. So I'm gonna play the last section and get us out, um, you know, to the button because you, you definitely always want to have a nice button on it, so. So you got that nice uh, button on the M, just, you know, F sharp minor chord, um, you know, hit it, bah, off, right? And, and that's it, guys. So um, as you see, um, if I could just kind of really, um, you know, make sure that, that we hammer home um, a couple of points for you, it's um, one you don't need a lot of sounds to make your cue hit hard, right? It's just finding the right sounds, making sure that um, you create the appropriate amount of space in your frequency spectrum. So, you know, if you got 808 down, handling and low end, don't have a bunch of other stuff down there muddying up um, your low end, right? Um, you know, you got your kick, popping like even though i use that that drum loop man i high passed all that low end out of it so it's not competing with my kick you know so my kick could really um pop through the way that i want it you know you can be creative with your one shots and stuff like that I obviously be creative with like your delay and things of that nature that helps make your cue um interesting as well um and be creative with your layering very, very important in these types of cues. You know, layering in and out, that's what's creating your sense of dynamics. Um, it's not a whole bunch of this and that, but it's really the layering that's creating your dynamics and, and your momentum and, and your motion, things of that nature. Um, obviously, sports cues come out the gate swinging, right? And that's not saying full, full throttle, but you gotta come out with some energy I would definitely say have your melody, you know, there when you have it, but have somewhere to go as well. And again, we're back to layering. So you come out the gate swinging, 
But in that second section, I would say, you know what, you want to have maybe another little, you know, level before you go into your breakdown and make sure your breakdown is not broken out too much because the other thing is your dynamics need to stay consistent. So typically for those types of cues, you want pretty static dynamics, even though you are you know, dealing with some layers and things of that nature. So again, guys, I hope uh, this was helpful um, to you. If so, please like, please subscribe uh, to the channel. Again, this is called Down for the Team. Um, and yeah, man, it's always a pleasure to do this. And I look forward to getting another Q breakdown to you real soon. And until next time, peace.